Okay, it's two o'clock. We will go ahead and get started. Thank you all for joining me today for some last minute tips for Giving Tuesday. My name is Ashley Kepolitis. I am a community development specialist here at Mighty Cause. I'm certainly glad to be with you all today. And I had a chance to mention to those who were on a few minutes early that we certainly appreciate you carving out time as we get into this busy fall season for fundraising. So I'm excited to be with you and I appreciate you making the time to be with me today. And as we get started, what we'll do is we'll take a quick look at who Mighty Cause is, but then we'll focus our attention on to the Giving Tuesday basics and registration, your Mighty Cause profile, Mighty Cause resources, scheduling content, your day of plan, follow-up, and then we'll have a bonus, just the least that you need to do for success on Giving Tuesday. And of course, we'll have time for questions and answers at the end. Go ahead and post those questions or comments you know, throughout the webinar in the question and answer box or in the chat box. And we'll be sure to, to cover those at the end of everything. Also, we will be recording the webinar. So if you need to duck out a few minutes early before we get to questions and answers, no problem. You'll still receive that via email. We'll send a recording and the slide deck. So you'll be able to check in on anything that you may have missed if you have to step out early. So a little bit about Mighty Cause. We are dedicated to serving nonprofits. We have been since 2006. We offer a year-round platform for all of your fundraising needs, but we're specifically designed for the small to medium nonprofit, although we definitely have our share of large nonprofits as well. And not only do we process donations, but we also provide peer-to-peer -peer fundraising technology, donor management tools, integrations, and a number of other features. And also we have a free resource center with blogs, webinars, eBooks, case studies for throughout the year, not just for Giving Tuesday, but that's enough about who Mighty Cause is. Let's get on to just Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday basics and registration. What is Giving Tuesday? Giving Tuesday might be larger than you know. It was launched in 2012 and it's held annually the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And this is a global giving event. So it unifies nonprofits all over the world through a day of online giving, but also collaborative generosity. Maybe it's in person, maybe it's online, but it is global. And this year, Giving Tuesday is going to be November 28th. And on Mighty Cause, we're again excited to partner with the small to mid-sized nonprofits, just like you. And we want to spotlight your work and we want to help you bring in those donations. So for our Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause event, we don't leave you on your own. We're here. We're happy to help. We have a number of resources that we provide to our nonprofits. And this includes a nonprofit toolkit with everything that you need for before, during, and after Giving Tuesday. And we also have a number of webinars, uh, just like this one. You may have received the emails. And we have three downloadable ebooks that are specific for Giving Tuesday. All that we ask is that you register. And registering is what gets you on the leaderboards. And it also is what lets us know who we're working with so that we can provide the best assistance possible. To register, simply head to givingtuesday.mightycause.com. The register button is in the middle of the page. Click there, follow the prompts. It doesn't take long, but it's all that we ask. We ask that you register. And something to note, uh, you'll hear me refer to Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause throughout the webinar. And these prizes that we'll chat about and a couple of the details are specific to Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause. However, I know that we have participants from a number of different local or statewide campaigns. So there, I know that, for example, Georgia Gives, they also provide a Giving Tuesday event. So a lot of these tips and strategies, these are absolutely applicable regardless of your giving event. But the specifics for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause, for example, registration, you don't need to worry about those if you're participating in a Giving Tuesday event within your region. And there's a couple of important dates to note. So early giving for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause 
begins on November 14th. And all donations starting at midnight Eastern Standard Time on November 14th will count toward your Giving Tuesday total. And that means you can start moving up those leaderboard, leaderboards early. Now, registration closes November 21st. Again, this is just for Mighty Cause, Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause. That registration closes November 21st. So we don't want to wait. Even though early giving has started, you'll still have a couple of days to register. But go ahead and get that done now. And of course, the big day is November 28th. It starts midnight Eastern Standard Time. And it runs through midnight Pacific time because we don't want to shortchange anybody. So from midnight Eastern to uh, midnight Pacific time. Prizes, prizes, prizes. Mighty Cause is giving away $10,000 in cash prizes and over $5,000 in Mighty Cause subscriptions, which this is huge for us. Now, cash may be king, but those Mighty Cause subscriptions, those are going to help bring in more cash throughout the year. The prize opportunities are awesome and they are beginning in beginning with early giving. So throughout early giving and giving Tuesday, the leaderboards track the dollars raised and the unique number of donors. And to keep things fair, we break up organizations into two categories, small nonprofits and large nonprofits. And we also have power hours. So a power hour is a fundraising sprint that awards a prize to the organization that maybe raises the most money or has the most number of donors within the space of an hour. And then we have random prizes, which are also known as golden tickets. And you can think of these as a random drawing where we pick single donations at random and we award $100 to that nonprofit. So this means that every registered nonprofit that receives a donation has a chance to win a prize. In addition to the random tickets and the hour long sprints, we're encouraging our nonprofits to go beyond the traditional donation. And we wanna celebrate the matching grants, your recurring donations and retaining donors. And we wanna celebrate that with prizes. And also this year we're introducing something new for it's just for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause and it's our subscriber perks and we love our subscribers. So along with chances to win prizes within that primary prize pool that we just covered, we're going to give away over $2,000 in prizes for which only Mighty Cause subscribers are eligible. So it just brings in a little bit more, um, stirs it up a little bit, brings in a little more creativity. And you can check the details and all the prize information and tips in our rules and prizes tab, which you can find on the Giving Tuesday website. So tip number one for Giving Tuesday, it's your Mighty Cause profile. We're gonna spend a little bit of time here, but I guarantee you it's worth it. So there are four essential items on your profile page to do list. And these have to be completed. It's part of your registration process. Now the items are uploading a logo, adding a banner, sharing your mission within the about section and composing a thank you message for your thank you page. Now these are required because we also find them to be the most essential. So it's kind of two birds with one stone there. And why is it part of tip one? So the profile page is what your public sees. And you're gonna be sharing this page with your supporters and making the most of this page by presenting your goals and your mission in a thoughtful way is gonna make a big difference. Now your profile page URL is what you're gonna be sharing with your supporters. And you're gonna add this to your website. You're gonna include it on all of your organization correspondence. So making the most of this is gonna it's gonna take you kind of down the road, but it's also gonna gear you up for that end of year fundraising. So as you're looking at the different features we're gonna go over, just kind of keep in mind, Giving Tuesday, end of year fundraising, what can you do there? You can make these customizations using the quick edit option at the top of your profile page. You can include pictures, videos, organization wish lists, upcoming programs, events, volunteer opportunities, your page really is like a canvas. Anything that you know is going to really connect with your donors is what you want to present on your page. And you're going to think about what do your donors need about need to know about your organization? Are there upcoming initiatives? Maybe the rising cost of goods lately is changing your budget. 
Or maybe your organization has had some breakthroughs in your community and you want to celebrate that and you want to further those activities. So that's what you're going to use your story section for. And that's what you're going to do. Use the pictures, your media sections to, pardon, that's what you're going to use those sections for. It's going to be connecting with your donors. And now I have two examples of organizations that have made the most of their pages. And keep in mind, this is also some last minute activity. So you can go big or you can go minimal. The point is to be intentional with your pages. So first we're gonna take a look at Vets Beyond the Uniform Foundation. For what they chose to do on their organization page, it's a little, it's a little, I'm gonna say streamlined. And what I mean by that is that it's not lacking in engagement, but it's very straightforward. They start with their video, they go through, they explain who they are, how that contribution is gonna make a difference. The giving activity they chose to include so we can see that people care. And then we have that media gallery where it's that visual engagement in a new way. They also link their Instagram page where you could link your Facebook or Instagram or not, totally up to you. The other example that we have is, whoo, went too fast, here we go. So the for the Isaac Foundation, the innovative space for Asian American Christianity, they went a little bigger, they got a little more involved. So not only do they start with their mission and they start to go through some of their activity, they also have a video and they have testimonials of people who have been involved and engaged. And you'll see how where they have their image of photo, it brings the life, it brings the personality to their supporters. So it's not just words on a page, but it's bringing faces. These are real people that they're engaging. So for their page, they did choose to be a little more built out. Both pages are good. Both pages are strong. It really is up to you and what you want to have for your supporters. So as you consider your page, like I said, it doesn't need to be grandiose, but it does need to reflect who you are. So along those lines, we're going to add or we're going to update a goal or a progress bar. Now you don't have to, we do recommend it, but it, again, just depends on what works best for you. And this progress bar is gonna be between your banner and the story section on your profile page. And you can update this to reflect the goal, the dollar amount for your Giving Tuesday. Now this can be changed or updated at any time. And you can also adjust the goal so that your page metrics start on November 14th for that early giving. And not only are we gonna customize our profile, but we're also gonna customize your checkout flow. Now you can find the checkout flow on your dashboard under checkout, the checkout section, and then you'll click on the donation form. So a few, excuse me, a few hints here. You can add suggested donation amounts and descriptions that pair up with a new initiative or any budget adjustments. And if you already have donation descriptions, Go ahead and make sure that those are up to date. And once you've edited the checkout flow, give it a practice run or better yet, have a friend walk through the checkout process and share any feedback because we want to make sure that this is as easy as possible for your donors. So I have two examples of organizations that utilize the donation suggestion amounts and descriptions. And these can include whatever you would like to include, but it, you want it to reflect, again, your organization and connect with your donors. So the Golden Gate Labrador Retriever Rescue, they only have four donation suggestions, but they make perfect sense. And the House of Blue Hope Foundation, now they included seven donation suggestions ranging from $35 to $2,000. So there's no right or wrong. It's the intent. And our intent is to guide the donor toward making a donation that's gonna link them to your organization's mission. Because you're cultivating supporters, you're not just raising funds. We also have the opportunity within that checkout tab on your dashboard to customize a thank you page. So this is essentially the donation confirmation page, but more importantly, this is your first opportunity to thank your donor for their gift. So you're gonna share your gratitude. You could do that through a picture, through a video, or just through text. 
totally up to you, but you want to be reassuring your donor that their contribution is making a difference. And to make it even better, you can add a call to action button at the bottom of the page. So this way you're directing your donors to the next step. Now the donation receipt is also customizable. And the good news here is not only do we send that receipt automatically as soon as the donor donates, now you don't have to worry about receipts, but it again is that opportunity to thank your donors. So essentially you're getting your first two thank yous in automatically. So it can include anything that you wanna include. It does primarily just need to be text because of the formatting of the receipt. And now that our donors are taken care of, let's take a quick look at the back end of your organization profile page. So the bottom icon on your organization dashboard is your settings tab. You're gonna head here to make sure that you have all of the admins that you need for this here and that you can go ahead and remove any previous administrators who no longer need access to your organization profile page. Now in the general settings section, you'll wanna make sure that your social sharing options have been updated for your Giving Tuesday content. And this can be updated throughout the campaign. So you'll wanna get started now so that when people share your page on social media, it's updated, but then throughout the next couple of weeks, you can be updating this so that that content varies from day to day or every couple of days. And finally, double check your EFT setup and your legal information. So within EFT, there's a disbursement settings tab just for that. And then within the organization info section, that's where you can check your legal info. Now is just a great time to do that. It's always good to check in and when better to do that than Giving Tuesday. So last thing, if you're returning to Giving Tuesday, so if you participated with us last year, go ahead and take a moment to focus on your retention. So check your donor retention rates in the overview tab on your dashboard. It's gonna be the, the first item on your dashboard. So donors that gave last year on Giving Tuesday are a great source for this year's campaign. And go ahead, create a special strategy, do a special outreach just for them where you thank your donors for that previous engagement and where you ask them to participate again this year. And as a side note, that retention isn't, that retention tool, I should say, isn't only available for Giving Tuesday. The feature is available all year round. So just in your last minute getting ready and activity, don't forget about that retention. It's super important. So tip two is your Mighty Cause resources. So we have the resource tab. It's on our Giving Tuesday on our main page. And within that resources tab, we have the toolkit with everything that you need. So no matter how large or small your 2023 campaign might be, we have what you need. And to help with that last minute marketing and communication to your supporters, we have email templates, social media post suggestions, we have logos, graphics, and we have a checklist that takes you from today all the way through the days following Giving Tuesday because follow-up is very important. So we have content that will take you all the way through. Now let's say that storytelling or matching grants, you know are good things, but they're intimidating. Let us help you. We have guides that are gonna walk you through not only steps to take, whether it's storytelling, matching grants, and some other activities, social media, things like that. But we also talk with you about the mindset. So as you're making plans and you're going forward, it's not just things to do, but it's the mindset to have. I am telling you this toolkit is like a pot of gold when it comes to Giving Tuesday. So step number three, you're gonna start scheduling your content because this is super huge when it comes to being prepared. Go ahead and start writing those emails now and let our templates help you. You don't have to start from scratch. And let's say you're gonna send five emails Write all five now, so this way you can make sure that the Tuesday giving message is clear, that the flow of your emails makes sense, and then you can time them out. And also, if you have a prize-winning strategy, particularly for those power hours, you want to make sure that your donors know beforehand so that they can prepare. And don't be afraid to cater to your different audiences. Segmenting donors can be super helpful when it comes to identifying and putting that personal touch with your donors. 
So for example, if you have monthly donors, you're going to address them directly, thanking them for their monthly support. But then you're going to highlight the prize factor of Giving Tuesday, and you're going to ask them to give, again, a special gift on Giving Tuesday or during early giving, whatever fits your strategy best. Another example, let's say you have donors that give every year at the end of the year. They always give in December. Go ahead and email them directly and request that they donate for Giving Tuesday. And again, highlight the idea of the leaderboards and the prizes, or if you have a matching grant going on, and let them know that their donation can go further if they participate in Giving Tuesday. Of course, we definitely want to rec recognize and encourage that any donation anytime is good, but it's okay to ask for donations at a particular time. Also, if you have a routine correspondence, be sure to include your Giving Tuesday link in all of that messaging. The same goes for when you're posting on social media. And don't forget, most crucial step of all is going to be that you test out your emails before you send them. And this includes your proofreading because you want your content to be a wow factor and not an oh boy, oops type factor. I mentioned social media. We want to prepare for social media also. So much of our culture runs through social media, and this is where you have the opportunity to, wait, to raise awareness for what you do, but also to gain donors. So be sure to check out our Giving Tuesday social media tools and our guide and the nonprofit toolkit for just extra info and some, some ideas and some tips. A couple things to remember right at the moment. Posting on different uh, social media outlets is huge. And the more you post, the better. So go ahead and write up those posts and create your schedule in advance because things are going to get crazy as we lead up to Giving Tuesday. So go ahead and get the post set up, get your schedule ready to go so that as you start to make those posts, it's it's a thought through, it's a thorough, thorough and a well-dressed campaign Again, you want everything to be flowing. We've got lots of tools. Don't hesitate to use them. So for example, we have, um, I have two examples. Pause has already started posting their save the date content. They've done so on multiple outlets. Here's just an image of one. And a post from last year shows the organization Save the Animals Foundation in Cincinnati they started to prep their donors, not only for the big day, but they also were using their tagline, just one more. So they formed a tagline just for Giving Tuesday. And as they started their campaigning, that was their tagline, social media posts, emails on their profile page. It's just one more thing that you can do that helps create a, an awareness and then a reminder to your donors and to your supporters. When you post online, that's when people can start to share those posts. You'll see for Save the Animals Foundation Cincinnati, they had eight shares. That's what we want to do. We want to cultivate those shares. Now, we also need a day of plan. So we want to get that together before Giving Tuesday. We don't want to miss any opportunities to engage your donors and not just your, your donors, but your supporters as well. So you want to assign point people for social media, donor, donor questions, and for monitoring donations. And depending on the size of your organization, this might just be you, or it could be a couple of staff members. It could be volunteers. It just depends on your situation and on your setting. The important thing is that you have all of your bases covered so that you're going to keep your momentum going during early giving, but primarily on November 28th. Now, here's a big thing. Make sure that you meet with everybody who's going to be involved before November 28th. We want everybody to be clear. We want everybody to have the right information so that they can fulfill their role with excellence. We don't want confusion. We don't want people to be lost. And people feel better. They do better. They volunteer better when they know and are prepared for what's coming up. So take a few minutes beforehand to make sure everybody's ready to go. Now, we want to engage our supporters on Giving Tuesday. So you're going to celebrate your milestones. You're going to celebrate with your staff. You're going to celebrate on social media. You're going to celebrate by sending out emails. You want to keep things fun. It's exciting. It's a great day. You're joining together 
with thousands of other nonprofits and you're making a major impact in your community. So it's something to be celebrated. Now, what we're also going to do the day of is we're going to keep an eye on those matching grants and on our prizes, and you're going to use social media to pursue those other donations. And you're going to do that also to just engage with your supporters. So here's an example. When Save the Animals Foundation Cincinnati, same organization we just looked at a moment ago, when they received a $10,000 donation, they celebrated everywhere, and that included social media. So here on their Facebook post, not only do we see they made a post, but we also see the reactions. There were 736 reactions to this, this donation. There were 50 comments. This is engagement. This is what we're going for. And this is the opportunity that we have on Giving Tuesday that just is, it's just a little different than any other time during the year. So let's make sure that we're capitalizing on it. Tip number five. We want to plan that follow-up. Follow-up increases your future gifts, and it helps to close out the loop on Giving Tuesday. People want to know how you did on Giving Tuesday. They cared enough to donate in the first place, so go ahead and give them that respect and give them that gratitude of showing your Giving Tuesday success. I know we just said it, but post on social media that success. Send out those emails. When you're doing your, your different newsletters and your different conversations with donors, make sure that you spotlight that Giving Tuesday success. Follow-up is also going to keep your donors engaged for future donation opportunities, future fundraisers. And it's also going to keep the door open for volunteering. Uh, they're going to be the people who are promoting you. And also, when you have that critical support that you need at different times, Following up with your Giving Tuesday donors is part of what just keeps that relationship going so they don't feel like, well, you only use this when you need a donation. No, you want to develop those relationships. We want to steward our donors and our supporters well. So we're going to welcome those new donors with a personal touch. This is a great activity for a volunteer, by the way. We want to welcome in our new donors, especially for those if this is their First Giving Tuesday, but also those who have donated, let's say other times during the year, but this is their first recurring gift, or if they were retained from last year, we want to add a personal touch to anything that makes a donation stand out. We want them to know they're part of your mission. And this also goes for those big donors. So if you have a large donor, or let's say that they gave a matching grant this year, these are big deals. So make a big deal out of the way that you, you celebrate them. Maybe this is taking out a big, or excuse me, taking a big donor out to lunch. Or for those matching grants, maybe you provide a little bit of nonprofit gear to them, celebrating your mission. Make it special as you start to steward those donors. Now we've got a bonus tip. And this is the least that you can do and still have success for Giving Tuesday. Sometimes the least we can do is all we can do, and that's okay. So all that you need to do is look over your current Mighty Cause page, make sure everything is up to date. You're going to fill in those four essentials, get in your story section, your logo, make sure your to-do list is done and your banner is there, excuse me, your thank you page is done. Get those four essentials done. If they are, make sure everything's up to date. You're going to create a few social media posts. Doesn't need to be a ton, just a couple, and at least one email blast so that you can alert your supporters that Giving Tuesday is coming. At the bare minimum, that's what you can do. And who knows, you might win one of those random drawings. You could have end up with a golden ticket. All it takes is participation. And whatever donations come in, it's a win. Now with that said, let's go ahead, let's go through some questions. I've seen a couple come in already. I do want to mention just a couple of things. I mentioned at the very beginning that we have those prize perks for our Mighty Cause subscribers. If you are interested in our Accelerate, Accelerate subscription, I would be more than happy to get you paired up with one of our um, experts where they can go through what you're looking for in a platform and then the features that we offer. Uh, not only Will using the Accelerate plan boost your Giving Tuesday fundraising, 
but it also puts you in the running for some prizes. So um, definitely just nothing else. We can get a good conversation in there. No commitment. But if you're interested, go ahead and post your email in the chat or the Q&A box. I'll make sure to get you paired up with one of our experts. We also have a, um, I totally lost the word. We have a survey at the end of our webinar. Let us, you can let us know there if you're interested in a demo, but also let us know what other content you would like to hear from us. I know that uh, some people have asked for more examples, so we're trying to work those in. Uh, there's some other topics people have asked for, so we're trying to get those in, maybe not an individual webinar for that, but we're trying to work that information into the webinars and the blogs that we're hosting. So uh, we definitely appreciate it when you fill out those surveys. But let's go ahead and we'll get started with some questions. Give me just a moment to catch up here. So Arnold asked about early giving. So early giving doesn't end on the 21st, just to run through those dates again. When early giving begins on November 14th, that will run straight through up until the 28th. The only thing that ends on the 21st is registration. And that's so that we can get leaderboards and prizes and all of that filtered out and set up. So registration ends on the 21st. Uh, but you can raise funds starting November 14th all the way through the 28th. So there, I had mentioned, um, and also Leah had a question. So there are some local giving events. For example, uh, Georgia Gives has a giving event on also on Giving Tuesday. So there's some organizations, Colorado Gives, and then we have North Texas Gives, and there's Washington Gives, and there's a number of others that are hosting Giving Tuesday events. So if you've registered with any of these other organizations or um, not organizations, any of these other giving events, then that's where you're gonna wanna participate because those are best suited for the organizations within their region. So what you'll wanna do is yes, stick with Leah, you'll stick with that giving event, that, that local giving page, that's where you're gonna wanna stay. Now, a lot of the features are gonna be the same, but as far as prizes and also the deadlines and things, those are going to be different. So you'll want to pay attention to that local giving event page. Also, just a quick note, the, or, the webinar will be, it is recorded. It will be emailed as well as the slide deck will be emailed to anyone who registered for the, organ, for the uh, webinar. But also on our Giving Tuesday page, if you go to the Giving Tuesday page, select resources. And then the toolkit, you can find all of our webinars posted there. It may take a day or so, a couple of days to get the webinar and the slide deck there, but you can see it. You'll be able to access it there. And Kim asked for any tips uh, for folks who have just finished a fall fundraiser. They had a luncheon, but now how do we move to Giving Tuesday? So other than segmenting donors, there's a couple of things that you can do. A big thing is thanking anyone and everyone who participated with the luncheon and letting them know that Giving Tuesday is happening. So you don't necessarily have to ask them to give again, but letting them know, thank you for participating. In addition, what you'll do in a, a broad outreach, you're gonna say, hey, we just had this luncheon and it was amazing. For anyone who wasn't able to participate, we have Giving Tuesday coming up. The other thing that you can do is use Giving Tuesday as an option for to say, hey, get involved with our organization. It doesn't have to be through donations. So Kim, what you can do is say, hey, we just had this great fundraiser. Now's an opportunity. I don't know what your organization does in particular, but in essence, now's an opportunity to get maybe a little more hands-on involved if that's suitable. And hands-on involved might be writing thank you cards or it could be doing phone calls, or it could be getting in your community and talking with people. So it more would be an opportunity now to segment to, if you didn't get to donate, now's an opportunity, but then now's your opportunity uh, to get involved. So I hope, Kim, I hope that that's helpful. And I do have uh, someone asked about, about quarter after, uh, about two, 15 asked, they're not sure if they're registered for Mighty Cause, but they are registered under Washington Gives. So because you're registered with Washington Gives, that's one of the regional giving events going on, 
you won't really want to participate in Mighty Cause. You're going to want to participate through Washington Gives. So don't worry about registering for Mighty Cause. Stick with Washington Gives, but go ahead and implement the different tips that we looked at here today. For example, if you have participated in a giving event at a different time during the year, go through your profile page and make sure your content is up to date. For example, if you participated in Give 828, go on in and update where you have Give 828 and change that to hashtag Giving Tuesday as opposed to Give 828 just to, to show your donors the difference of, of the two different campaigns. Arnold asked, what kinds of things do we check our emails on? So a couple of things. You're going to be, one, checking to make sure that your emails are going out. Uh, also, as new emails are coming in, or I should say new people are donating, so now you have new emails coming in, you're going to want to make sure that your donor management systems are filtering in, or make, you're making sure that they're getting those uh, email addresses, and then add them to any email blasts that are going out. And it's okay if it's a give again email, that's okay. Because oftentimes our give again emails have a thank you component. So we wanna make sure that we keep, um, kind of keep that thread going. We're always wanna be thanking our donors. But a big thing is you wanna make sure your emails are going out as they ought to be, as they're scheduled. And you wanna make sure that whatever new email addresses are coming in, they're getting on the email list. But also you wanna check to see is anyone emailing me saying that they're lost online? Or did anybody email saying, hey, I didn't get a receipt? Or I think I emailed, but I meant to add um, a dedication. I wanted to make this in honor of my mom. So you wanna follow up to see are donors contacting you because they're they'll have questions. So that's why you wanna, those three main reasons why you wanna keep your, keep a tabs on what's going on with your email. And Emma asked if people can donate before early giving. People can donate before the 14th. However, if someone donates before the 14th, it's not gonna count towards leaderboards and prizes. So the donate button does function, but the donations won't count towards those leaderboards and prizes. So if, you, if you're a part of NSGT, um, those uh, the prizes, the competitions, those won't apply. Sarah asked that right about 2.30. Those won't, the prizes won't apply, but the, as I mentioned, the um, the different features will. Okay, we've got a question about Colorado Gives, just a moment. So someone asked as far as Colorado Gives and Giving Tuesday. So for anyone who happens to know what Colorado Gives is, if you don't, don't, don't worry about this too much. Uh, it's really up to you. A lot of organizations will use Giving Tuesday as sort of a springboard towards Colorado Gives. It de I, I, I hesitate to give that advice in the sense of there's a lot of particulars to your organization. That said, if you use color if you use Giving Tuesday as a launching point for Colorado Gives, you can use a lot of the same marketing or let's say that you have a couple of initiatives that you're working towards, go ahead and, and focus in on those initiatives for Giving Tuesday. And then when you get to Colorado Gives, you can talk about, hey, look at this momentum that we have, look at how much we've raised, help us get to the, to the end line, to the finish line. I hope that that's helpful. I, when you have the two different giving events going on, you can, I I happen to like the idea of using one marketing plan to lead into the other. Not everybody feels that way. It just happens to be my, my preference. It also keeps things a little more, it makes things easier for you in the craziness of everything. If you try creating two different marketing campaigns, that's tough. Um, so that I hope that that's helpful. Uh, Louise, I hope that that's helpful. EB, I got your email address. Thank you for that. Let me see what else we've got going on. So as far as prizes, so someone asked how to win a prize. And it, it depends on a couple of things. So I'm going to suggest head on over to our prize page. And I'm going to go ahead and post the link to our prize page in the support, uh, excuse me, in the webinar chat. So 
there's a lot that there's a lot of different prizes. Sometimes it's based on the most number of dollars, the highest amount raised. Other times it's based on the most unique donors. But we also have some prizes that are in regards to recurring donors, um, things like that. So I'm going to not get too much into the weeds on the specific prizes. I'm going to send you on over to the prize page because there, there's there's a lot of different um, a lot of different options. And as I mentioned, in case anybody missed it at the beginning, we do have a delineation between large nonprofits and small nonprofits because we want things to be fair. So yes, some will be um, total amount of donations. Others are gonna be number of donors, power hours are a little different. And the random prizes, doesn't matter how much you've raised. If a donation was made, you might be able to, um, you might, it might be drawn as a random ticket. So that would be good. Okay, let's see. Just making sure I'm going through. Okay. So Lisa did ask, and because she's also uh, part of Colorado Gives, and she asked about why there's a different day. In regards to Giving Tuesday Day is just what it is. Uh, for Colorado Gives Day, they 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 wanted to have just a particular time that wasn't that that specifically Colorado that wasn't lost in just the world of nonprofit giving. Um, also, it it just allowed for some different marketing and promotional opportunities. Having it be a different day than than Giving Tuesday, uh, it's certainly not intended to to confuse any donors or anything of that nature. Uh, the hope also sometimes isn't, it's not just donations giving on Giving Tuesday, but but also that let's get involved and be be more than just, um, I don't use the word bystanders, but let's get involved with our hands and volunteer, things like that with Giving Tuesday. Um, so it the reasons for a different day, there there's a number of reasons. A big part of it is the opportunity to be just Colorado gives um, in December. Okay, Carrie, one moment, let me see. Yes, Carrie, I will definitely get you connected with one of our one of our experts. Okay, Allison mentioned a uh, concern about the the thank you note. What I would say, Allison, go ahead and touch in or touch base with our customer support and see if um, they can, what they'll be able to do is look specifically at your organization page. And from there, the, they'll be able to see what may have happened there. Was it a um, an error in somebody's email address, the way it was typed in or something like that. So we can definitely take a look there. Um, what we can do is if you, for that question, go ahead and um, reach out. If you go to our support page, there's an option to, to touch base there. So I would say reach out to our customer support team. Uh, Laura, yes, there will be a recording of the webinar. We'll email that and we will also have that on our, on the Giving Tuesday page within the toolkit in the webinar section. Tanisha, California does have a um, couple of different giving events. What I would say is head on over. Um, let's see, what would be the best way? Um, I would I would actually just check with your local, your other local nonprofits to say, hey, um, there's not every local giving event is on our platform. So I would say kind of touch base to see. That said, you are more than welcome to participate in um Mighty Cause and on Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause, we would love to have you. We have a large number of California organizations. We have a number, for example, for those who maybe participated in Give in May, although that's a California event, it's not happening Giving Tuesday. So I would say um, go ahead and, and just jump in on Mighty Cause Giving Tuesday. Uh, you're certainly going to have a number of great tools, a number of great opportunities for prizes and those that fundraising. So I would say just kind of jump on in to what we have. Okay, so we did have a question about uh, recruiting volunteers through the different initiatives. So we have a couple of things. We have a, a tool on our on the platform that allows for opportunities. Now that is part of our Accelerate subscription. And what that allows is for, you can post different opportunities 
for volunteering, but also just different calendar events that are going on. And you can post that on your profile page and then people can sign up to volunteer or to participate in whatever the calendar event might be. So you can do that through your profile page. That's one option through our volunteers tool. Now, as far as recruiting, if you're looking for just some different suggestions for how do you get people involved with Giving Tuesday, for example, to be following up with social media or something like that. A big thing is, you, and this isn't mean to sound trite, but you ask, uh, put out a call on Facebook or on through email or through your newsletters, however you typically engage with your supporters and say, hey, listen, Giving Tuesday is coming. We're looking for some volunteers. And then give them a list of things that you need. Some people are going to say, I don't do social media. I cannot be helpful there. That's fine. But if they make phone calls, if they're comfortable doing phone calls or if they're comfortable writing thank you notes, let them know this is the list of what we need. They might say, I can't do that, but I definitely do this. Also, let them know for opportunities after Giving Tuesday. They might say, hey, it's too short notice. You can say, that's okay. We're going to need thank you notes for year-end giving, or we're going to need people who are calling or stuffing envelopes for year-end giving. Or let's say that there's some different community opportunities in the month of December, and you're going to need people to be at a booth at a festival, or you're going to be doing different engagements, or maybe there's a conference that you're attending. Go ahead and list those. The big thing is, is just ask. Put out a list of different different um items or tasks that need to be done and ask people for help. And don't hesitate to ask people directly. Uh, sometimes they they won't just raise a hand. You got to ask them. But once you ask them, then they're so glad that you did. So I, I hope that that is helpful. Okay, just a second here, James. So we don't, so Jane's asked if we have any referrals or suggestions uh, for those who, um, and he referenced them as contractors, someone who would be able to run a campaign or, or put that Giving Tuesday campaign together. There are people who uh, manage social media accounts and things like that. Unfortunately, we do not offer referrals or suggestions to anyone. We don't uh, link ourselves in that way. One thing would be just kind of, as I, I just mentioned about recruiting the volunteers, uh, put out a call to your to your general supporters. Um, I know that you're small. It, well, I shouldn't say I know that you're small. Um, you said that you don't have time. That's different than being small. But if you are small, still go ahead and reach out. And what you might have to do is say to someone, hey, do you know of anybody who can help us? And there might be a small cost involved. So you're not always asking your volunteers to do it. You might just be saying, hey, do you know of anybody or, or a trusted contractor that I could reach out to. But unfortunately we don't, we don't provide those. So the leaderboards aren't ready just yet. Those will appear on Giving Tuesday, or excuse me, uh, when early giving begins. So uh, we can't find the leaderboards yet because they're not there, but you'll see them on the website on the Giving Tuesday page when you go to that main page. So once that giving early giving begins. And for the matching grants, we don't supply matching grants. It is up to the nonprofit to secure a matching grant. We do have a matching grant tool. What that allows is where you're able to showcase on your profile page who provided the matching grant, and it can be anonymous, but it's how much. It also would describe what the grant, what the match is. Is it a dollar for dollar? Is it unlocked only when a donation is $50 or more? Uh, do, do you have to reach a certain number of donations or a certain dollar amount before the matching grant is unlocked? There's a lot of different options. What I'm going to suggest is we do have within the toolkit, my favorite thing of Giving Tuesday, within the toolkit, we do have a matching grants guide that will walk you through all of that. And also we have a couple of uh, blog posts and support articles that talk about how to secure a matching grant, how to create it on your page, but I'm going to direct you to the toolkit for that. Okay, Claire, give me just a moment here. So, so Claire had asked, um, and I'm just going to summarize a little bit, is it better to add, 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to cover this as a lot, a, no, a high number of or uh, donation suggestion amounts and descriptions. So for example, uh, their organization has amounts from 50 to 5,000. And there's, uh, it seems, uh, it says that there's $50 since one student to the youth leadership seminar, 5,000 covers a year um, a scholarship for a student. So there are, there's benefits to adding the increments, but we also don't want to overwhelm our donors either because we want as few clicks as possible and as little scrolling through the checkout flow as possible. I would say um, decide as a group, don't even decide by yourself, but but ask a couple others within your nonprofit to say, okay, what are the key donations that we're looking for? We like the smaller ones, but we also like the bigger ones because we don't, we want to encourage people to give it all levels, but maybe decide what are our six major amounts that we want to make sure people see. And I would decide that as a group. Um, I definitely don't know that we want 50 to 5,000. I feel like that would be a ton. Uh, but again, I don't know exactly what your breakdown would be. Uh, so I, I would I would say get with your group and see what what are the main dollar amounts that people usually give and the main dollar amounts that we want to hit that will help us to reach our goal. Oh, Lisa, you're very welcome um, for those. It, it gets tricky with Colorado, like with the not that Colorado is tricky, but with Mighty Cause in Colorado. So I'm glad that glad that you asked, and you all are very welcome. I'm so glad that you've been able to participate, able to ask some questions. I I Anne asked. I always think that it is better to go with the local giving event. Um, it's what's being promoted in your community the most because it's. Mighty Cause isn't, is, is uh, not that we aren't, but we are nationwide, where if you take somebody like Georgia Gives, Georgia Gives is also doing promotion. So they're doing promotion within Georgia that's also promoting you um, as part of their event. It's just, I will always, I will always vote to sign up for that local, that local giving event. So Angie asked, um, this is her first introduction to Mighty Cause. Welcome. Uh, what I'm going to suggest, Angie, is I have your, your email address now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pair you up with one of our experts. Uh, she asked if um, there's a subscription or a paid account to participate in Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday itself to register does not require any payment. It's totally free to participate in Giving Tuesday. So that's that's a big thing we want it to be available to all nonprofits regardless. But we do have subscriptions uh, that will allow for just some extra tools and features to be used. But Giving Tuesday itself is totally free of charge. We're just happy to have you. Arno, good. I'm glad that this has been understandable and helpful. I'm, I'm glad that this has been, been good. Let me just go through. I see a couple more listed in our question and answer box. I've been trying to go back and forth a little bit. So someone did ask, um, and I think this might be our, our last question, which is good because we I can let y'all go and we're a little bit over time. Um, I appreciate everybody for sticking with me. So Veronica asked, um, her city hosted a giving day just a month ago, and she's asking if it's too much to ask donors to give to another event. And how do you go about asking if you do? So there's a couple of things. Uh, I kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier on, but slightly different, uh, where someone had their a fundraising luncheon. So in a similar way, there's always going to be donors who didn't give during El Paso Giving Day. So you can reach out to your donors as a whole and thank them for those who participated in El Paso Giving Day, but ask them, hey, if you didn't get to, now you have your opportunity. Here's Giving Tuesday. The other thing that you can do when asking again is letting people know, hey, we had this great success, whatever your success was. Now, if you didn't meet your goal, you can let them know, hey, we still have 4,000 or 20,000, whatever it is, $400, whatever it might be to reaching our goal. And you can say, here's another opportunity and be sure for those who have given, to thank them for giving and, and ask them, 
would you be interested in, and you can even, depending on your nonprofit size, you could say, would you be interested in contributing just another $5 or just another 10 or just another hundred, whatever you're comfortable with, with your donor base to say, we're so close to our goal. Here's another opportunity. Here's the other thing. When you're doing your asking for giving Tuesday, when you're asking again, it is you're going to be pointing out, we have the opportunity for prizes. So that's one of the things that makes, can make a difference for donors, or if you get a matching grant, I would definitely encourage you try to get a matching grant so that if you are asking people to give again, you're letting them know, hey, we're just asking you to give $5 and it's going to be transformed into 10 with our match so that you're, you're saying here, we're, we're not just asking for more money, but we are meeting you halfway. We're creating a match and we have the opportunity to win prizes. Do you mind giving just a little bit more to help us reach our goal? The other thing, when you're kind of shifting from one giving event to Giving Tuesday, is highlight this idea that, hey, this is an opportunity to volunteer. It's the opportunity to learn more about us. Or what you do is you say, hey, we're not asking you for more money. We're asking you to share us on social media. We're asking for you to promote us so that you're not giving again from El, pa El Paso Giving Day, but you're passing on the word, you're sharing about us, and those are the new donors that are gonna come in. So the Giving Tuesday donors are like the new donors or the El Paso Giving Day, those are your faithful core. So Veronica, I hope that that's helpful. Uh, I hope for anybody who had a, a chance to listen or has a similar question, that that is helpful information. What we'll do is we'll go ahead, we'll call it a day. I do have the email addresses uh, for everyone. So we'll make sure to get, get you paired up with an expert. One last time, I just want to thank everybody for coming out, for bringing questions, for bringing ideas, and just being a part of Giving Tuesday. It makes it exciting um, as, as we get closer when we start to see everybody coming again.